may not be in a position to get an education. And I know that some people would say, why pain? Why do we need pain? What difference does it make? Well, it makes a great difference. Because all of the studies show that while matriculating only a little over 20% of the students across the country, if they happen to be African American, those who ultimately earn degrees, close to 67% of them, are students from HBCUs. And it's my notion that the CSRA could be and could challenge the Atlanta area as a mecca for higher education, and in fact, education in general. So I feel that here at Payne College, we have an obligation. Since Payne College creates about $33 million in economic additions to the CSRA, then we ought to recognize that an institution like this is vital to this area. So I want to be sure, and Mr. Knox has said it over and over again to me in the last three or four days, it's not about me, it's about pain. And what we can do collectively, meaning when we collaborate with the city, Mayor Davis, with the commissioners, with all the other entities of the city, we can change the perception of the Augusta area when it comes to education because all of its citizens ought to have an opportunity for an education. So it's important that institutions like Payne College exist in such a way. And I'm sure that you've been reading that all across the country HBCUs, many of them, are having financial difficulties. And so it is with pride and appreciation that I say to you two days ago that this gentleman offered $1 million to Payne College. And let me say that in this context, because he wanted me to make sure that the Augusta and the CSRA really understand uh, the additions to that donation. Sachs, as you know, <coughs> cited Payne College a couple of years ago for not having an audit report that indicated that it could sustain itself over a long period of time in its financial condition. And there were three conditions related to that. Two of them very easy to solve and we've done that. The last one has to do with the number of encumbrances against Payne College's endowment. In other words, Payne College has about an eight and a half million dollar endowment. About six million of that has been encumbered. In other words, when you have assets, you can borrow against those assets. And so Mr. Knox, after a lot of questioning in terms of where we are, what, we, what are we going to do? What will this donation do in terms of getting Payne to the point where it can arrest those encumbrances and then be in a position where all the accredited bodies will uh, give pain an opportunity to be where it needs to be. And I told him that we're about halfway there. So this, on his part, is a leap of faith that says by the first, the end of June or the first of July, we will have found the rest of that six and a half million dollars to put pain in a position then to reapply for full accreditation. We are fully accredited now, but it's a, it, is, it is bartered with a restraining order. In other words, uh, we are going through some legal challenges. We are fully accredited. But this 
obviously helps us to get where we need to be. What I'd like for Ms. Carter to do now is put up Mr. Knox's statement because he kept saying, this is not about me, I want it to be very simple and I want the statement that relates to Payne College and what we're intending to do and to let everyone know that Payne College, even as a part of its hymn, is that the gates of Payne College are open to any student, regardless of race, creed, color, national or origin. And so Payne has never been an institution that has denied admission to anyone based on those demographics or characteristics that the person can't control. I sent uh, Dr. Hardy a text, and I was hoping to have this screenshot, right? I'm sure you can read it. <laughs> projected up on the screen, right? You've seen it, you know, just a big screenshot with the little, the little, you know, what is that little tail that comes off? Uh, anyway, I'll read it aloud um, just to uh, yes. let you know what I sent to Dr. Hardy about today. And I said, let's make it about pain and pain's rich, lengthy history in Augusta. About Augusta being a college town and the strength of having more, not fewer, centers for learning and growth about building bridges in town, figuratively, building bridges, about our youth, about love and respect, so not about, you know, I'm grateful to be able to give a gift. I would like to ask uh, the mayor to get up here, too, because I consider him, as well as Dr. Hardy, bridge builders, and I would like to underline that and thank them for their efforts, their contribution. Dr. Hardy building a bridge from his, how many retirements? His fifth? Countless retirements. So building a bridge from his well-earned retirement, plural, and his extreme, and his clout, and his legacy in the university system of Georgia to Augusta GA pain and to Mayor Davis for his bridge building sticking his neck out for the citizens of Augusta trying to find creative ways to break impasses so anyway go ahead and run there's one over there and they can run it again all of them are there I'd like to thank bridge builders I would like to encourage bridge builders, um, and I would like to make a day about bridge builders, bridge building. Um, thank you. All right. This is what community is about. And I'm pleased to be a part of this. Commissioner Fenoy, who's also a Paynite. We're excited to be a part of today's announcement and look forward to additional announcements as we partner with Payne College in the city of Augusta. This is a great day for our community. Thank you, Dr. Hardy, for your leadership. Thank you, Peter, for your gift. And thank you, the community, for continuing to stand with Payne College and the fine students who are here in attendance as well, who are matriculating through these halls of higher learning that they too will pass this along to future generations. Thank you and God bless you. While we want to focus on the gift today, a residence hall every year for the next three years, revitalizing that section along Laney Walker Boulevard and turning the warehouses into uh, an outlet that will generate funds for Payne College, and we can talk about those later. But today, we honor, and he told me not to use that term, but we honor Peter Knox for what he has done for Payne College. We're ready for questions. 